Did you do that? Did you give Him all your worship? Did you give Him all your praise today? He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy of all the worship, all the praise, the adoration. He's worthy of it all today. Nobody is worthy like Jesus is worthy. Nobody cares for you and loves you, adores you like Jesus does. Ah, oh, he's so good this morning. He's so wonderful this morning. Nobody's like Jesus. Nobody compares to him this morning. The great presence of the Lord this morning. Don't you love him? Isn't he great today? He's just wonderful. He's just great today. Nobody's like him. Nobody compares to him. Nobody compares to his beauty, his holiness, his majesty. Nobody compares to him. He's wonderful. He's glorious. He's majestic. And he's worthy this morning. Amen? You love him this morning? Are you in love with him this morning? Amen, amen, amen. If you will, remain standing and turn your Bibles with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18. While you're finding Proverbs, uh, won't you turn around and say hey to somebody around you? Tell them, tell them um, you're glad to see them, that you're glad they're in the house of the Lord with you. Again, if you're watching us online, thank you for watching us online. Thank you for being here. Let us know you're there. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Give us a hey, how you doing? Uh, and look with me, if you will, remain standing, uh, and look with me in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, reading just one verse. We read this, or started this last week. Uh, we talked about the name of the Lord, uh, so we're just going to kind of continue with that uh, this morning. Proverbs 18 and verse 10, a very short verse. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him. And are safe. Isn't that great? The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The, the King James says a strong tower. The godly run to him and are safe. Are you thankful for that this morning? I'm thankful for that this morning. You may be seated. So the Lord adds blessings to the reading of his word. So last week we talked about the name of the Lord. Uh, in that uh, message, we talked about uh, uh, three things uh, about the name of the Lord. We talked about that the name of the Lord is, uh, is powerful. Uh, we talked about uh, what others trust in. And then we talked about uh, that we trust in the name of the Lord. And, and we talked about that we serve the God whose name is powerful uh, and uh, uh, that his name strikes fear in the heart of the enemy. That his name causes demons to flee. It, it brings salvation uh, uh, to the sinner. Uh, and when we look at the second part, though, of, of Proverbs 18 and verse 10, uh, uh, we see that the, uh, something else uh, that the name of the Lord does. Uh, uh, we see that the name of the Lord is not only is it a strong fortress or a strong tower, uh, we see that the righteous run to him uh, and they are saved. We see that uh, uh, the name of the Lord, again, is strong. He is powerful. He is majestic. It's wonderful. All those things we talked about last week. And, and then we see today, and we're going to talk about today, that the name of the Lord, not only is his name great, but it's a strong tower where the righteous run to him, the godly run to him, and they are safe there. This really tells us this morning that, that God's name, <clears throat> excuse me, and that God is, our, uh, is, is really, uh, he is our divine refuge. Uh, and as our divine refuge, uh, God is our divine protector. Uh, and when the righteous trust uh, and run to God, uh, the place of refuge is a place of protection. We've got to realize today that we serve a God who knows how to protect his people. Why? Because God is our divine 
protector. God, can I get an amen there? All right, all right. So here, help me with this. We're talking about the name of the Lord this morning, right? Yeah. That he is a strong tower. Yeah. He's a fortress where the righteous run to him and are safe. Yeah. You should smile about that. Amen. You should be happy about that. Why? Because nobody else will do for you what God will do for you. God is our divine protector. There is a battle of life and death that is happening before us. And throughout the Bible, uh, we see, and you can see where men and women were engaged in battle to save and sometimes destroy life. In Hebrews 11, what's called the Faith Hall of Fame, uh, we see where men and women uh, were engaged uh, for the survival of their life, both physical and spiritual. It was in these times of battle uh, that people need this place of rest and recuperation. They need this place of divine refuge and the divine protector. People like uh, Joshua and Gideon and Jonathan and David and Elisha, just to name a few of them. They all found this need for a place of rest and protection in the time of battle. You know, today we are fighting, we're fighting a battle of life. We're fighting a battle of life, and our, our battle is the battle of our spiritual life. Because I believe, and you've heard me say this before, but I believe today that, that the enemy is coming after uh, uh, the spiritual life of people. He's coming after the family. He's coming after people. Uh, and he's coming after your soul, though. And this spiritual conflict, conflict uh, that we are in is an inward battle. And it must be fought with spiritual weapons against an invisible foe. Uh, can I tell you, too? We need to enlist the young soldier. Come on now. Come on now. We need to enlist some young folk. We need to bring them up, train them up. We need to encourage them. They don't look like us. They don't act like us. They don't smell like us. They may not do church like we do church, but they may do church. In fact, well, let me back up on that. Can I, I'm, I'm, off my, I'm off script, but I, I just got to say this. I believe one of the greatest problems that's ever happened to the spiritual, uh, spiritual life of the church is that we learned how to do church. I believe one of the greatest, the greatest failures of the church is that we learned how to do church. We learned how to come into church, and, and we, learned how to, how, we, learned how, we learned the lingo. We learned the words to say. We learned the songs to sing. We, we learned the, the handshake, the secret church handshake. We learned how to do a holy hug. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. We learned all the church stuff, and we learned how to do church. But can I tell you, doing church is what's caused the church more problems than anything else. We want to point to the devil. And yes, the devil, we'll talk about that later. But the reality is today is that, uh, that church people learning how to do church is what's hurt the church more than anything else. Let's move on. The spiritual fight, the spiritual conflict we are, we are in, it's an inward battle uh, uh, that, that, that must be fought uh, with spiritual weapons. Uh, and we're fighting against an invisible foe. We've got to get the young uh, soldiers enlisted uh, into this fight of faith because the reality is this morning, uh, uh, we, uh, the fight we are fighting demands and requires uh, our complete and our total uh, consecration. We cannot afford to, uh, to be half in and half out like we talked uh, on Wednesday night. Our soul has an enemy, and that enemy uh, is the enemy of all humanity. And his name is Satan. He's the accuser of the brethren. Can I say this this morning? I've already said that about the church, so I, I'm going to say this too. Might as well while I'm here. The church has one enemy, and the enemy is Satan. That's the enemy of the church. One enemy. We are not each other's enemy in the body of Christ. Amen. I don't care. Can I tell you? I'm going to say this too. 
I don't care if you're a Presbyterian. I don't care if you're Episcopalian. I, I don't care if you're Baptist, you're Methodist, you're Pentecostal. Uh, uh, I don't care uh, what you believe as long as you believe this. Uh, you got to have Jesus Christ in your heart to get to heaven. Uh, that's what I care about this morning. Uh, in fact, I believe that's what Paul wrote about where he said, uh, I don't want to know anything among you except Jesus Christ uh, and him uh, crucified. Uh, can I tell you today, uh, uh, we have learned uh, again how to do church. Uh, we have learned the things to say and do. Uh, and we have, we have all of a sudden, uh, we have created enemies uh, among the body uh, that were not meant to be enemies. We have fought uh, and we have had inward fighting uh, over stuff that does not matter. Uh, we have one enemy uh, and that enemy is Satan uh, and he's ready to destroy your soul. We have fought over pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. When's Jesus coming back? Uh, and we fight over it. We fight, is he coming back before the tribulation, or in the middle of the tribulation, or, or after the tribulation? Man, I mean, people get fired up about it. Can I tell you it's irrelevant when he's coming back? What is relevant is that he is coming back. It's in the battle of our spiritual life that we need weapons, we need, we, we need armor. The armor we need has been provided for us by God himself. Listen to what 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 8 says. I love this verse. It says, but let us who have or who live in the light uh, uh, be clear-headed, listen, protected by the armor, listen, of faith and love uh, and wearing as a helmet uh, the confidence uh, of our salvation. We've got three weapons according to this verse. Faith, Love and confidence. Faith in, the, in, in, the, in that God, that the God we serve is all powerful. A love that never fails. And a confidence that we have been saved and redeemed out of a life of sin and shame and suffering. Do you know today you can be confident in your salvation? You can be confident in your salvation in Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry about it. Now, do I understand what I'm saying this morning? I'm not preaching a gospel that says you can live like the devil and still get it to heaven. No, you can't. But I am preaching a gospel that says uh, you can be confident uh, in the ability of Jesus Christ to save you. You can be confident in the ability of Jesus Christ to change you uh, and to transform you. That's how we fight this battle of life. That's how we fight this battle uh, for the soul uh, of humanity uh, with faith, with love, and with confidence. I'm going to tell you this this morning. Even the greatest uh, of warrior needs a place of rest. Even the greatest of warrior needs a place where, uh, where they can find rest uh, and they can find recuperation. And the place we find rest is in the presence of the King of glory. We find rest in the presence of the King of glory because the reality is today is that He is the God of the battle. He's the God. I, I believe we sang that song recently. The battle belongs to God. The battle is His. It's not mine. It never was mine. It, the battle's not yours and it never was yours. The battle is the Lord's. And when the battle is the Lord's, we can rest in Him and we can rest confident that He's going to win the battle. We can rest confident in knowing that, uh, that He is in control. It's in the battle that we realize that God is our defense. It's in the battle that we realize that, that He is our fortress, that He is our hiding place, He is our refuge. And it's in the battle that we realize He is our shield. He's the one who is there, who is a very present help in the time of need. He provides a, a way through difficulty, that, that he removes obstacles. Listen to the words of, of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. 
Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. And listen, I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. We have no reason to fear the battle of life because God is with us. He holds us. He gives us strength. And he is the one who gives us the victory this morning. We have no reason to fear this battle of life. This place uh, or this time uh, that we are in, uh, we can run to a place where the divine protector is there. And he can minister and he can touch. You know, as we walk this spiritual highway, we've got to remember that he is the place of refuge for the weary. He's the place of refuge for those who are hurting, who are in anguish. And it's in this place of refuge that we realize that our divine protector protects us. It's, it's there that we realize that He protects us from the allurements of, of the world that flash before us. When men try to get us to do what they want, uh, how they want it, uh, He gives us the wisdom to know the difference between man's ways and his ways. Because the reality is today, his ways are higher than man's ways. Our divine protector encourages us when men try to discourage us. He encourages us with words of comfort, words of peace, words of joy, words of knowledge, words that assure us of his ever-present presence. When unbelief creeps up and hinders the work of Christ, it is our divine protector that helps our unbelief and pushes back against the master unbeliever. When our imaginations run wild. Anybody's imagination ever run wild on them before? Mine was running rampant early in the morning, this morning. We planned to go to bed early to make up for the lost hour of sleep. And finally about 2.30 on the new time, I went to sleep. Can I tell you, my mind was running a, a thousand miles an hour. My normal stuff, I finally was just like, I'm just going to give in and just let my mind go. And finally went to sleep about 2.30 this morning. There are times when our imagination can run wild with us. And when our imagination runs wild. It's in those moments, many times that, that we face The enemy is coming in and and he's trying to tell us that we're going to lose, that we're defeated, that there's nothing we can do, that that, that we are washed up, that we're dried up, and that we're just leftovers. And we find ourselves with thoughts of defeat and despair. And it's in those moments that our divine protector gives our mind a peace that passes all understanding. And when the weights of the world seem too heavy to carry, it's our divine protector that comes in and declares, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. It's our divine protector sustains us. God, God's sustaining providence supports the weak and, and He preserves the faithful. Our divine protector, who is our refuge, he removes stumbling blocks. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? He removes stumbling blocks and he takes out uh, unfaithful leaders. He condemns the hypocrites of the church. Uh, He convicts the judgmental heart. Uh, He prevents us uh, from becoming a stumbling block uh, to our fellow believer. And he opposes uh, uh, the religious attitude of the self-righteous. That's what our divine protector does. That's what he does when, 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 
when the name of the Lord is trusted in, when the name of the Lord is lifted up and we trust and we depend on Him and we lean on Him and we understand that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous, the godly run to Him and are saved. It's the godly who find refuge in His presence. And whenever we find refuge in His presence, we realize that God is our divine protector and He protects us. He looks out for us. He watches over us. Can I tell you this morning, we have a great divine protector this morning. He's our divine protector. There's two things that God does. One, as our divine protector, God promises us the victory. I thought I'd get a better amen there than that. Because I'm going to tell you what, you look at society and you look at everything that is around us, you look at everything that's going on, and everything points uh, that the church should not succeed. Everything points that we shouldn't be successful. But I'm going to tell you today, church, we've been promised the victory by Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but I believe it's time that the body of Christ stop being defeated and start being victorious. It's the work of the triune God, our refuge and our shield that brings us the victory. It's His work in our life that brings us uh, the victory uh, over all the things that we are facing. It's, it's Jesus that shows up uh, and He begins to minister, He begins to touch, He begins to move uh, in the hearts and the lives of people that changes life, that changes uh, everything that's going on. And can I tell you this morning, we need to walk in victory. We need to walk in victory. We need to talk in victory. We need to act again like we're victorious. We need to, we need to stop walking with our head down like we're defeated. We need to stop walking around like we don't know who holds tomorrow. We need to stop walking around like we don't know who's in control. We need to stop walking around like we don't know what's going to happen. Listen, I may not know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know who does know what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's who I trust in. I've said this before, I'll say it again. My joy does not come from my situation. My joy comes from knowing who's in control of my situation. God has not called you to be defeated. God, can I tell you today, you, somebody needs to hear this. The victory has been promised to the church. And if you're part of the church, victory has been promised to you. Let me go that a step further. Victory has been promised uh, to the believer. You say, how do you get that? Uh, because we are more than conquerors uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we need to walk in that victory today. I believe today uh, that if we'll start finding our strength uh, in our divine refuge uh, and understand that He is our divine protector uh, and realize that He has promised us the victory, uh, I believe that the church will start being uh, victorious again. You, you know what happened in the church? I mentioned this recently, but you know, we, got, we got the big head. We got to think we could do it on our own. We got to thinking that we, we, knew, we had all the answers uh, and that we had everything under control. Uh, and God's like, okay, if you think you can, then go ahead. And we, we, we've got to start realizing uh, we can't. We got to realize that we can't bring the victory. The victory is the Lord's. We got to realize today that we can't fight a battle because the battle is the Lord's. We got to realize today that we can't overcome uh, without outside uh, of the power of Jesus Christ in our life. Uh, he's the one uh, that enables us to overcome. You got to realize today uh, we got an enemy out there, uh, and that's Satan, uh, and he wants to destroy your soul. Satan wants to come into your life, uh, and he wants to steal, to kill, uh, and to destroy. He wants to take everything you've got, uh, and he wants to defeat you. He wants to destroy you completely. He wants to totally annihilate you. And Satan shows up in the battle of life and he claims an authority that is not his to claim. 
He shows up in, the, in this battle of life and he tries to say, hey, I'm in control. I'm large and I'm in charge. Can I tell you today the devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. The devil is a liar. He can't tell the truth. That's how you know the devil's lying. His mouth is moving. It's like a politician. That's how you know they're lying. Their mouth is moving. If you're a politician, I, I don't mean to be offensive. Yes, I do. I tell you that the devil's a liar. It's in the battle of life that is raging up, that Satan contends with the saints. He fights against the saints because the reality is Satan wants to keep believers. He wants to keep us out of the place of refuge. He wants to keep us out of this place uh, where we can be under the protection of our divine protector. Uh, he wants us weary. Uh, he wants us worn out. Uh, he wants us ready to quit. Uh, and Satan will in inspire uh, false miracles uh, uh, with one purpose, uh, to prevent uh, the righteous from trusting in uh, and following God. Satan knows uh, that if he can prevent uh, you uh, from trusting in God uh, and running to him uh, as our refuge and as our strength, uh, that temptation that the temptation to disobey will be stronger. Uh, Satan will slander the saints. Uh, he'll inflict disease. He'll oppose righteousness. Uh, he'll remove the good seed that is sown. Uh, uh, Satan uh, will sow tares uh, among the wheat, uh, and he will ruin your soul uh, and afflict uh, your body. Uh, Satan uh, is a liar uh, that instigates sin uh, and preys on humanity. Uh, how in the world can you trust somebody like that? He's wanting to destroy you. He's wanting to tear you down. Now all Satan wants to do in, in this battle of life is to prevent you from reaching this place of a refuge in God. He wants to steal your victory. And he wants you defeated and not victorious. Satan wants you defeated. He wants you torn down. He wants you overcome. He wants you to, today to be this place where, where you don't know your right from your left. Where you're so defeated, you're so overcome that you're not sure which way is up. But I, I got news for the devil today. Victory is mine today. I don't know about you, but, uh, but as I was getting ready for this morning, uh, I just got to this place, and I, I, can I tell you today, uh, we got to realize uh, that victory uh, belongs to us. Victory uh, is mine today, uh, and I will not be defeated uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't think you're getting it this morning. Uh, I believe today uh, that too often, uh, too many people uh, have succumbed uh, to the forces of Satan uh, and not enough people uh, have walked in the victory uh, that belongs to us uh, as being blood-bought children uh, of the one true king. Uh, can I tell you today, uh, whenever he saved me, whenever he redeemed me, uh, whenever he called me out of darkness uh, into his marvelous light, uh, he placed a victorious heart uh, within me, uh, an overcoming spirit uh, within me. And can I tell you today, uh, I must walk uh, in victory victory. I will not be defeated. I'll be the head and not the tail. I'll overcome and not be defeated. I will be the one who will stand and declare this is the word of the Lord and I will not be defeated. I'll walk in victory. Can you understand today that victory today is mine? I told Satan you get behind me devil. You have no place in my life. Victory, victory, victory is ours today. Somebody understand you are victorious and you are not defeated in Jesus name. I want to tell you something. In Jesus name you stop being defeated. In Jesus name you stop walking into the house of God oh we ain't got near as many as we used to have. I ain't got the money I used to have either. I ain't got the car I used to have. There's a lot of things that I, ain't, that, that, that I don't have now that I used to have. And if I based my life off what I used to have, I, I'd have nothing now. If you live in the past, you'll die in the past. You hear me this morning, church? 
If we hang on to all those things, well, we used to have this, uh, and we used to have that. Uh, oh, look, we used to have this many, and we used to do this, uh, and we used to do that. You used to be a sinner, too. You don't hang on to that, do you? You used to be a liar. You used to be a cheat. You used to be a scoundrel. But when Jesus saved me, when Jesus redeemed me, he said, hey, I'm going to put a victorious spirit within you, and you walk in victory today and not defeat. And can I tell you today, if the church keeps on hanging on to what we've always hung on to, we'll die. But if we'll grab hold of Jesus, and if we'll follow Jesus, if we'll go where Jesus is leading, if we'll go where Jesus is taking us, we'll live and we'll be victorious. And he will multiply and minister among us like never before in Jesus' name. Amen. He promises us the victory. Victory. It's promised. Read in Deuteronomy. Or read in Revelation. Read throughout the Bible. Where he's promised victory. He's promised it to us. And we got to learn to walk in it. We got to learn to walk in the victory. And not the defeat. I will bless the Lord at all times. And at all times, I'll bless the Lord. He said, how can you do that? Because I'm walking in victory. I'm not walking in defeat. I'll understand today that whenever I walk into the back, when I walk into those doors or these doors or any door of this church, I'll realize today that I'm entering into the presence of the King of glory, and that when we gather together for worship on Sundays, when we gather together for Bible study on Wednesday night, that we're gathering in the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that we're in the presence of royalty. When we have a time of worship, I'm going to worship. Why? Because He's promised me the victory. I'm going to worship because He's worthy. I'm going to worship because there's nobody else like unto Him. I'm going to worship Him because there is nobody like the King of glory. I'm going to worship Him. I'm I'm going to worship him. I'm going to worship him. And I'm going to know today that I am victorious because I worship and I serve a king who is above all kings. As our divine protector, God promises us the victory. But not only does he promise us the victory, he rewards us. Aren't you thankful for that? Aren't you thankful that God's got a reward? Aren't you thankful today that, that, that there's a reward waiting? I don't know. There's some they ain't got a reward waiting. They going to well, they got a reward, it's just not one they're gonna like. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart when you die or the rapture takes place, you're not going to heaven. You you've earned your reward. It is a place called hell. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go there. I'd much rather go to heaven. He said, well, how do I make sure I go to heaven? Uh, you got to have Jesus Christ in your heart. That's the only way. If you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross, uh, then you will be saved. That's what the Word tells us. And, it, it, and if that's true for your life, uh, then there's a divine reward waiting for you. And that reward is called heaven. And I look forward to going there. I look forward to going there. I look forward to getting to heaven. Seeing all my friends, my family, loved ones that went on before me. Seeing them, man. I want to see the, the gates of pearl. I want to see the streets of gold. The walls of Jasper. I want to see the mansions that are there. I want to see all those things, but most of all, can I tell you, I just want to see Jesus. Face to face. I won't have to be encumbered uh, by, by carnal eyes when I get there. I won't have to worry about, the, uh, about how I see him now through carnal eyes. No, my eyes will be perfect. And I'll see him with glorified eyes. 
I'll see him uh, with a glorified uh, mentality. I'll see him today when we get there. I'll see him in all of his beauty, in all of his majesty. And you know we'll not need any sunlight there. Because the Father's there. And Jesus is there. And they are the light of the city. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that reward. The Bible tells us that the righteous will get a crown of righteousness that we get to cast back at His feet. That we get to declare with the angels, uh, with the four and twenty elders, uh, uh, holy, uh, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. I don't know what heaven's going to be like, but I want to go there because it's the reward of the righteous. And can I tell you this morning, we serve a divine protector who is our refuge in the storm. He's our refuge when we're weary and we have no strength. He gives us strength. And I want to tell you this morning, church, he promises us the victory, and he rewards us. That's what the name of the Lord is a strong tower. For the godly run to him, and they're safe. That's what it means. He's a place of refuge for the weary, a place of strength for those who are weak. And it's when we're there that we understand. It's when we're in this refuge that we understand that He is our divine protector. And as our divine protector, He promises us the victory. And He promises us rewards. Won't you stand with me this morning? At one point or another, at one point or another, we all reach a point where we're weary, where we feel like we're just worn out. I want to encourage you this morning. The word of the Lord declares to us to not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you'll reap if you faint not. Don't be weary this morning. Run to the refuge. Run to the refuge who is our God, who is our King, who is our Redeemer. Run to Him. Trust in Him because He protects us. This morning, I want us just to spend some time praying. Maybe you want to pray in your seat. Maybe you'll come to the altar wherever you want to pray this morning. I want us just to spend some time praying this morning. And I want us to ask the Lord for strength when we're weary, for peace when we're troubled for joy when we're in anguish ask ask the Lord to help us run to him as our refuge trust him and depend on him because he's our divine protector I want us to take just a few moments here this morning and ask the Lord to help us in these last days to understand that we are victorious, and that there is a reward waiting for us if we'll just keep on trusting in Him. Can we do that this morning? Father, Lord, we just love You today. Jesus, we magnify You. <clears throat> Lord, we love You today. Lord, we just adore You. There's nobody like You. Father, you are holy and you are righteous. You are just and you are merciful. 
glory needs you. God, we've got to have you. Father, Father, we've got to have you. Jesus, help us to run to you, our refuge. Strength, our shield, our guide, our stay. Father, touch your people this morning. Lord, help them to run to you in this rest, in this time of trouble, in the time of anguish. Run to you, our refuge, and there be our divine protector. Yes, Lord. Touch us, oh God. Touch, oh God. Lord, let that song be in our heart this morning. For Jesus Christ, God's only Son.
be our, let that, let's just let that be our theme song. Until the Lord changes it to something else. We'll not be defeated. He's promised you the victory. And when you run to Him, when you're weary and you're worn out and you're broken down, and you find Him, and He's your refuge, He reminds you you're not defeated. He reminds you of the reward waiting. And I don't know about you this morning, but I'm thankful. Oh, I'm thankful today that we are not defeated. I'm thankful today that, 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 that we are not, though oh, I'm thankful that we're the head and not the tail. I'm thankful today that ain't nobody like Jesus. Amen. That nobody compares to his goodness, his mercy, his grace. That nobody compares to who he is. Ain't nobody like Jesus this morning. Are you thankful for that today? I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that we're not defeated. Thankful that we've overcome. Love that for Jesus Christ, God's only Son. He fought the battle and He won. He fought the battle will not be defeated anymore. Amen? Amen. Walk in victory this morning, church. Walk in victory this week. And don't be defeated in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Let me encourage you to make plans to be with us Wednesday night at 545 for our meal. Believe in God uh, for great things. Uh, uh, just to continue to minister and touch in our church. I'm just, can I just tell you, I'm just crazy enough to believe that God's going to do something magnificent. I just know He is. Because that's who he is. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask our council member of the week, uh, Terry Triplett, to dismiss us in prayer.